What's going on dudes, Liebens Mute here, back for another Divinity Original Sin 2 video on 15 vital tips for Act 3. It's the shortest in the game, but not short of surprises. The first 10 tips involve the Outer Island, while the final 5 tips involve the Academy. The Pocket Realm is no fun to slog through, and, and can even end Honor Mode runs if you're not careful. An easy and risk-free way to complete this area and gain the same XP is to jump over to these pipes behind the obelisk at the entrance. Head down all the way and use that character to jump over to the core platform and shut it down. No more lava or death fog destroying your run. If Sabeel is in your party, talk to her on the Lady Vengeance as soon as you enter Act 3. If you don't, you can lose her to the Shadow Prince because you don't know her favorite song. Karaoke Night just got a lot more interesting. Be gone, Mr. Studio Girl. If you have Red Prince and Sabeel in your party, Park Sabeel down to, by the stairs to the Altar of Zorostissa and talk to the Shadow Prince with the Red Prince first. This will allow you to continue his quest. Afterwards, you can bring Sabeel along to initiate combat and progress the story, but be careful for the ambush and get to high ground. If you're looking to complete the Devourer set, don't forget to enter the cave beneath the Altar of Zorostissa and place a flame rune in the mouth of the dragon to obtain the Devourer's Eminence Leggings. The Black Ring encampment nearby can be friendly if you assisted Almira or sided with the Lone Wolves in Act 2. They have plenty of wares, and Wordless can read your mind too. Just don't approach the lizards on the other side unless you have adequate persuasion, as they can blow your cover and start a fight with the whole camp. Duna's tomb is just northeast of this encampment and has some odd mechanics with many traps and omniscient clay figures. At the end is the Night of Duna. You can convince him that he's corrupted by passing combat but giving no rewards or XP, or you can fight him and gain a solid amount of XP and rewards including his unique helmet. Stand clear away from the clay figures or destroy them beforehand as they attack every few seconds even when in combat without restrictions. After defeating the knight, you can finish up his quest with the Watcher standing on her perch, outside overlooking the tomb. On the other side of the island, Alexander is based up at the Mother Truth Gareth staring him down. You can persuade Gareth to not seek revenge on Alexander, saving his life later in Act 4, or you can allow him to attempt to get revenge with you choosing a side to fight on. If he does get revenge, he will follow a doomed path in Act 4. Bye, have a great time! You may wonder, Alexander or the Salaman? I say, why not both? If you want maximum XP, defeat Alexander and his lackeys first, then take his head to the Salaman and give him the same treatment. To be fair, they both oppose your goals. Now we're getting into the upgrades. Eternal artifacts are found all around the island and can be combined with armor to give specific bonuses shown here on the Fextra Life wiki. You can also combine them with your weapon to give 25% additional damage as air damage and give a chance to shock. The armor of the Eternals can also be made with these items and provides a decent chest armor with immunities to shock and stun. With rune frames, runes get a lot more interesting. The mystical frame gives skill bonuses depending on the rune type and what equipment you place it in. The power frames give increasing bonuses to attribute points based on the type and size of the rune. Contrary to popular belief, size matters with power. Now we dive deep into the academy. If you don't want to deal with the puzzle at the Lunar Gate, there is a secret entrance on the far southeast corner of the lava fields. Be sure you complete everything out on the island before entering, as the quest lines complete after stepping foot inside of the academy. Before you enter, your companions will separate from your party. Those with high attitudes or with their quest lines completed will immediately side with you, but those with low attitudes towards you will require persuasion or simply refuse to accompany you any longer. Companions you cannot convince to join you will be gone permanently from this point forward. Just inside the entrance, there is a Void Woken that attempts to convince you to become Sworn and follow the God King if you are undead or fain. If you become Sworn, you gain plus two to attributes, combat skills, and talents. Don't worry, you can sever your connection to the God King later if you wish to use Sworn Breaker. You can make one in this act or find another in Act 4. If you do use Sworn Breaker, you still keep the additional stats. In the Arena of the One, there is the Great Guardian located in the middle that you must defeat to claim victory. A simple way of doing this is sneaking a character around and turning the mirrors to reflect a beam at him, then throwing down a face capacitor on the plate to stun the Great Guardian and destroy his magic armor. You can also sneak around and pickpocket the face capacitors from the Guardians around him, destroying them in the process. 
you gain full XP no matter how you clear this encounter. Finally, on the step to Godhood. There are several masters at the table in the main hall that can be seen with spirit vision. Each master provides a bonus of 5 in their respective stat, but also decreases another attribute by 5 at the same time. And each master can only teach one god Woken, so choose wisely. That's it for the 15 tips in Act 3. I hope you found them useful, and if you did, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.